Real Talk Nation. I made it. Shocker. Who would have thought? There was yet another interruption on a Thursday night, but that's what happens when you have a 10-month-old. However, welcome in to this week's episode of Real Talk Gaming and Sports Podcast. Hey, what's up, folks? Thank you for bearing with us. We appreciate you. Al, I'm glad you're back, my brother. (laughs) Yes, me too, my friend. So, well, let's chat. just jump right into this thing, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm fixing my camera real quick. Sorry, chat. It got bumped when I went to go get the daughter. So, yeah, for sure. Appreciate everyone hanging out in there with us while I had to go do that. Because, you know, <laughs> when, you, when you plan things in life, they always go the way you want them, right? But, yeah. So, like we said last week, there's really no, first things first, there's really no Redskins uh, stuff to talk about this week. Nothing's happening. Shocker there. Yeah. So we're going to go right to the biggest game of the year, the Super Bowl. Or, Super Bowl, I mean, man. I, I guess you can call it a Super Bowl. I mean, I'm not going to be Trey yeah. Wingo and yell at you for if you called it boring. Let me put it that way. Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, that whole situation with Trey Wingo is ridiculous. Like, bro, first yeah. of all. I, I had to unfollow him on Twitter. Yeah, I, was like, I mean, and I love Trey Wingo. That. That's the thing that pisses me off is I like that guy. He always loves the same shows that we love. Mm-hmm. Always is quoting all that shit that we like. And he, right. and he, dude, he goes on ESPN and literally I thought he was crying, bro. I was like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> and then he starts yelling like, just shut up. Just shut up. Here, you know I what? Know. Hold on. We're going to play it. We're going to have to play it for the folks here. This, uh, I mean, we can just, oh, wrong, wrong scene. Sorry. That's from the old show. Yeah. I mean, he like berates his audience and like, even yeah. his co-hosts there, are like, reason, what are you doing? There weren't bro? any points scored by the Rams in that game. Yeah. Here, we're going to jump ahead football. a little bit. I do agree. The audience, the super, the oh, NFL is trying right. to reach. You're right. That's I'm right. Throwing that out there, okay? Because I've been all in. Yeah. Me. Where is he? Oh, here no, we go. Here right. we go. Oh. Me, Make me want to watch. That's so much. Shut to up! Ask? Just shut up! If you don't want to watch, then don't watch. Go watch the Raptors and the Knicks. Go do something else. But don't sit there for four flipping hours with your eyes glued to the game and say, "Oh, this is so boring." But I can't stop watching. Oh, it's so boring. Just shut the hell up. Wow, you know okay. what, I Trey mean, get- Wingo? You shut the hell up. All right, bro? <laughs> like, okay. that's unnecessary. Like, yeah. chill out for a second, man. Come and, on, man. And, and to play devil's advocate because someone's got to, like, I understand <clears throat> his point, which is yeah. what Tony Romo was saying in the game, is that, you know, at the end of the day, it was a tie ball game with seven minutes left to go to the Super Bowl. It just so happened to be 3-3. Right. So it's not the Super Bowl that you're used to seeing high-scoring games and really just the NFL you're used to seeing. That's not the NFL that the NFL wants to sell. It's not 3-3 in the Super Bowl. He was heated after the Super Bowl. So I get it. People complain about the game. Yeah, who cares? Like, Let the people talk about the game how they feel. It's just their opinion. What are you flipping out about, dude? Yeah, it's right. ridiculous. So, but we'll never anyway, yell at you like that, chat. We promise. Never, 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 never. We but love you guys too much. We were way off on our predictions, like not yeah. even close. But then again, no way one was off. close. So I think well, Home Run said he won like some money because he said it'd be three nothing in the um, yeah the first Who won? quarter. But out of the three, uh, of- uh, well, I guess you would have been the closest. No, yeah. Well, don't say. <laughs> of course, Blake wanted to bring that up. But yeah, Blake technically won in terms of predictions because he was the closest. I, my conspiracy theory has Ooh, had, had a massive hole in it, man. I really, I, I underestimated Bill Belichick's ability to overcome the cheating by the NFL. That's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Zach, thank you. Hey, up, let's go, Zach. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. At the oh dang six months, oh man, Zach, respect, bro. Yeah, man, let's much, go. Much appreciation. Yeah, stop the conversation for that. That's yeah. a big one. But nah, like to what you're saying. I mean, it was because Bill Belichick just coached out coached Sean McVay. You know his defense, right. and you can give credit. I don't know the linebackers coach who's now the head coach of the Miami Dolphins and the Grizzly that, veteran man. That yeah. I don't know that his name because he had a major key part in the play calling of that defense but at the end of the day bill belichick is a defensive coach so you had to give credit to him for that and you know he definitely just had a plan against mcveigh and mcveigh looked like a 33 year old kid on the sideline not knowing what to do no i agree i mean and that that shows the weakness in uh hiring you know the young coach now again 
nothing against McVay, but the experience of Belichick definitely weighed in heavy in that game. Yeah, but then again, he's 33, and he's definitely going to be back. So oh, there's just, no doubt. There's just, no right, doubt. This is just the right, first of right. many. Yeah. You guys have computers, so you'd be able to look this up. I don't know if Belichick won his first Super Bowl that he went to, so maybe y'all can verify that. I'll look maybe it up right now. Or not, but I don't know. But either way, McVay is here for the long haul for sure. Absolutely. Where, who, who knows how many years we have left of Belichick. But, you know, that kind of leads me to my next question. I, I can is, see that argument, T. How how long is how how long can the Patriots keep this up? And is it good for the NFL for the Patriots to keep it up? I'm before let we Blake take that, that one. Yeah, yo, before we answer that, T, um, congratulations to your uh, Patriots man. I know you're a big fan, bro. Yeah, so, for uh, sure. Hey, but um, so we're talking. What's the question again? Sorry, I got. How check. long? I think should have been MVP. Uh, how long? Can the Patriots keep it up? All right, yeah, I, I think that um, the Patriots probably have two more years. Don't get mad at me, T. You know, in the end, Brady had a kind of rough year. Nobody's going to want to talk about it, of course, but it's okay. It's fine. In the end, Belichick's defensive mind outplayed that offense that should have probably put up at least 14, you would have thought. So in the <clears throat> So I, I really think that uh, probably Belichick, Brady, two more years, maybe Belichick three to five more years if he can get a uh, backup quarterback. Yeah, I know, T. I'm sorry, man. I just I... – What say uh, you, Chief? Well, oh. I, I tend to agree. I tend it's to hard agree to now. against Brady, though, you know? I think, honestly, I think that Brady has at least three more years, um, honestly. He'll be 45. Yeah, Just throwing that out there. I I agree, but he does not take a lot of big hits. Uh, he's very good at knowing when to go down. He's like Peyton Manning in that way. Like they just know mm-hmm. when to get tackled. So, Peyton barring not playing football at forty, just throwing that out there. <laughs> Alex coming in <laughs> with the stats right away, but no. Uh, Tom Brady, I think that he's got at least three. That's all I'm going to say about it. Yeah, I mean, if there's anyone that could do it, obviously it's Tom Brady. We're in unprecedented waters. The dude takes care of his body unlike any other. Yeah, like man. his dessert right. is like a piece of broccoli. So the TB12 yeah. program, man. I guess. Yeah. It's- so uh-huh. and well, yeah. Really, like, I mean, Will, you're making a good point there too. Like, especially with Brady. I mean, you guys saw what happened in the the uh, what was it the the AFC sure. or you know whatever the championship game it was. Yeah, AFC uh, championship AFC game. AFC championship. Yeah, whatever. Uh, no, AFC. Did I say NFC? Yes, you said NFC. Patriots play in the AFC. Okay, AFC. I didn't mean to say yes. NFC. But, right. uh, I mean, you saw that. They breathed on him. It As he a, should. It was a freaking penalty. No, so, I agree. Well, and, and to I be agree. fair, that's not to be fair. That's not just not for him. Fault. It's not the way fault. of the NFL. The NFL has yeah. never been safer to play quarterback. I mean, you look right. at the reason the Vikings and the Packers tied in the second week of the season is because Clay Matthews sacked – Kirk Cousins, the way you've sacked a quarterback for a hundred years, but yeah, it's all Cam sudden, doesn't uh, ever get a penalty. Balls. So well, it's because Cam. Of- well, it's because Cam runs out of the pocket, and when he becomes a runner, you lose all protection. Oh. Tom Brady is never going to run out of the pocket, and so everybody knows that. Have, I mean, the guy runs. He's like going to have six flat of, forty. He has all the protection <laughs> in the world, but on the rash, really on the forty. For, for me, like I think it's going to hey. just mm-hmm. come down to, you know. I think they're going to leave together. I think that makes the most yeah, sense. Yeah, I agree. But, yeah. Um, we'll have to see when that happens. But the ultimate question is, is it good for the NFL? And I would have to say probably at this point, now that they got six, probably not. Like, I do think people are definitely actually going to start getting tired of it. I mean, we've been tired of it. Everyone loves to hate them, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it's to the point now, like, okay, we've seen it. It's a dynasty. But something ha- – there needs to be a dynamic shift in – Hopefully for probably for the NFL sake, that's in two years instead of three. Because if not, if the Patriots are in the Super Bowl next year, I guarantee you February 2020 when the XFL is kicking off, they're going to have a lot of viewers. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, um, be, and, and that's, that goes back to my point. I think Tom Brady has three more years, and I think that that actually works against the NFL's favor overall. Yeah. Uh I, you I know, I, I agree. I like I like the Patriots. I like seeing a dynasty. But I think somebody else in the AFC has to step up mm-hmm. and become a force to, to actually go team. against them and make it take so that 
this is exciting again. I mean, we you know we jokingly yeah. call the Super Bowl the Tom Brady Invitational. We do that right. in, for a reason. You know, like it's got to change. Right. Yeah. And I do think the Chiefs are that team. I think that they can do that. It's just a matter of Chiefs, changing the overtime huh? rules. <laughs> if they have yeah. the overtime rules, <laughs> right. you know, if you at least give Patrick Mahomes, like that's what I think is so funny. Like here we are, a week removed from the Super Bowl. I still see Saints fans complaining about the no miss call. Like really, to me, the fans who have opportunity to complain are the Chiefs. Like the Saints got the ball first in overtime and blew it. Yep, and then. You know, had the ball at the beginning of the game two times in the twenty and didn't score touchdowns. Like the Saints lost that game. No, yes. yeah, there's no doubt about they, that. They they yeah. were gifted. They were gifted. The Rams were gifted the opportunity to go to the Super Bowl because of a blown call. Yes, there's no debating that. But there's also no debating the fact that they won overtime. You won the coin toss. You win the overtime. And yep. Drew Brees throws a pick. So whereas the Chiefs didn't even get Patrick Mahomes didn't even get on the field. Like right. they lost, they didn't get to go to super time, the Super Bowl because they lost a coin toss. Yeah. Not because of a missed call. They lost a coin toss. That needs to be changed, at least in the playoffs. Like both teams need to touch the ball. They need, well, they opinion. need, they, what they should do is like go, I don't know. I mean, maybe this is crazy, but if they're going to play 10 minute quarter, play the whole damn thing regardless. Like do, do like soccer. Yeah. yeah. Play it all. Like go all yeah. the way. You know, I mean, yeah. that they makes sense. Go, to they me. pretty much go down to the last four minutes. Anyway. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Around. Like, I like yeah, that they I shortened agree. it for sure, but just play the yeah. whole damn thing, dude. Do hockey. Just I mean, you know, it's not hockey. And, and it's not, And like you know, I said, whatever. it can be at least just in the playoffs. Like, I don't care about regular season. Yeah, fuck like, the regular if you tie season, the regular yeah. season, that's on you. But playoffs, dude, that can't playoffs. be the way your season ends. Like, with the way that game ended, the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, to go to overtime, to only get to see one team make an attempt at it. I think Andy Reid would have blown it, by the way. Let's just get that clear. <laughs> <laughs> um I still think the Patriots would have won, but at least it would have been nice to see them get an attempt. But yeah. I would have liked to see what Mahomes did, man. I would have liked to see what yeah. he would have done. And we'll see. Right. We'll see. We'll see a lot of it, you know, in the coming future. It should be interesting to see. That's the two new teams, I think, at the NFL, the Rams and the Chiefs. And, <laughs> and I, I think it's a positive thing to say that there are a couple bright spots. And, yeah, I agree. You know, we have a couple veterans getting ready to retire. And, mm-hmm. you know, you and me and Chip have had this conversation we get kind of nervous thinking that some mm-hmm. of these guys we grew up watching are going to retire soon. It's, it's, it's cool. right around the Dude, corner, bro. Left with, you know, you if you would have asked me two years ago, I would have said really like football is probably going to die. Cause like right? the, golden, the golden era of quarterbacks was pretty much up. Our pocket it's, pass it's, kind of guy we used to is gone. Cause when, Cause when you saw what the league was trying to get to with RG three and that's, the one Redskins topic of today is that if RG3 was this year, not, you know, four years ago, the Redskins would be in perfect position because this that's the way the league is trending now. Yeah. Isn't yeah. what the Redskins were trying to do in that first right. year. And, you know, they did it the first year and then everyone figured out how to defend it and it just didn't work because of all the drama with RG3. We don't have enough time of the day to talk about that. But if he was coming out right now and the Redskins are drafting him right now, they would be building towards success where at the time they were at the edge of the curve and did it a little too early. But guys like Patrick Mahomes and, you know, really Russell Wilson, you could say he was the first to do that, you know, are trending in that mobile, more college friendly style play where like five years ago, if a guy didn't come from a pro ready system and wasn't like a Peyton Manning type quarterback, it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, and plus, I mean, we have to add to that. We we can't discredit the fact that RG three had no idea how to preserve his body at all. Yes. Right. Um, yes. And that's why, that's the field that we played on lives. is a big piece of garbage, or it was at the time. <laughs> yeah, so that's true too. FedEx is trash, but yeah, that's really the. If you had to put a finger on what makes him different than Russell Wilson, is that Russell Wilson played baseball and knows how to slide. Exactly right. If you want to, if you want to see the ugliest thing you've ever seen in your life in professional sports, go watch RG three try to slide. It's just painful. Yeah, like, it, it and they even doing. brought in the Nationals like coaches. Bryce Harper. Oh, you know they brought in Bryce Harper. That's right. Yeah. To so teach him how to slide, bit, and he couldn't but, couldn't figure it out. Yeah, that's why I'm wearing my my Nationals DC and my baseball theme because we do have a baseball theme today for the baseball that's fans you. out there. That's right. But uh, but yeah, but you know, of course, the other good part about the Super Bowl, which in the last couple of years hasn't been that great, which I thought were great this year, were the commercials. I agree. They Absolutely. they were much better this year. They I definitely think. made a comeback this year. They were awesome. They weren't overly preachy, which is nice. Um, some were, but you know that's to be expected. But you know, I feel like you know two years ago in last year. 
Every single Didn't one was just it. punching you in the face with a political message. It's like, bro, can we just stop, please? Yeah. So this year Plus they kind of got away from that, and they had some really good emotional uh, commercials. Mm. And my favorite one, uh, obviously, was the Xbox adaptive controller one. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't know yeah, how you could watch crucial. that and not feel something, man. That that was that was a good one. Yeah, and mine was the the veterans one for Google, you know, narrated by Jim Halpert. I mean, John Krasinski. Yeah. You know, I just thought that was a pretty cool little thing, you know, real simple, just voiceover showing the different veteran codes and stuff like that. And I, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah. What about you, B? Is it wrong that my favorite was something we're talking about later, the uh, Twilight trailer? Ooh. Spoiler yeah, alert. We're, we're, Spoiler we're talking, alert. We're talking about sad ones <laughs> I, I, ones I don't, or other ones I, that, i'm not a sad person dude i'm sorry nothing got I, me down. but see okay so uh, you nothing know i noticed in the field. will in the chat saying the bud light ones were all right i thought they were pretty dang the funny, bud light man. ones were pretty good and the the, the the game of thrones crossover was really cool um, yeah see that's what gets me hyped man because i knew it they debut at the super bowl i will agree i mean like again we're i'm saying the commercials are good because the last few years they've been just not like a good. like a club beating me with messages I don't care about. Yeah. And now they kind of got away from that. So in that respect, they were good. Uh, yes. Most of them were forgettable. I will agree with that. Like, who cares? And, and the thing is, too, like when we, you reference like Super Bowl commercials, you know, 10 years ago is when they were popping. But that's because 10 years ago you had to watch commercials. Like we live in a right. commercialist world. So... <laughs> To tons of commercials to have to commercial to world. have to convince people to actually watch commercials is just insane. Let alone to get yeah. people to talk about them the next day. So like it's just like Dunder Mifflin, you know. Yeah. Endless paper in a paperless world. Like there is no commercials anymore. Like if you still watch commercials, I don't really know you because like even <laughs> if I watch my DVR, like watch TVs on cable, I DVR it and fast forward the commercials. So yeah. Yeah. to get them to try to recapture that is tough. So from the marketing perspective, I do give them credit for the fact that we are simply even talking about any of them. I mean, That's doesn't true. that take you back to Mr. Shane's class, man? We used to have to study the Super Bowl commercials, remember? Yeah, Write up a report well, on it. It's also what my bachelor's degree is in two like so it's not like just mr shane's class <laughs> no but that's where it started yeah i know but that's because that's when the commercials were popping you know that's right yeah yeah but that's why you know, i make that there reference were, uh, there were some ones that you wanted to show right you uh yeah i was going to but then i forgot what they were so i didn't pull them up so all right i like rapping anyway so who cares exactly. yeah exactly I, yeah i mean producer failure on that one folks i'm sorry yeah. Well, I mean, the crowd is here to see my face, not the commercials. That's so true. About that. By the way, but, the caps are up two to one at the second intermission. Hey, oh. Okay. But yes, we will let Blake Dog talk about the, the Twilight Zone commercial because that was definitely a jaw dropping commercial, in my opinion. Are we going to do that now or are we going to wait for later wait, on that? Right now? I was just teasing it. Yeah, man. let's, let's tease it. Uh, what you put, uh, why, why do we have two gaming? Uh, I didn't realize you put that in entertainment news. Sorry. Yeah, thank we you. Can, we can, we can, let's stick with the uh, sports right now. Yeah, we're, we're in we're, the sports we're, mode, bro. Come well, on. We're talking about commercials, but whatever. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> it's um, fine. fine. It's high quality fine. production here, folks. Fine. Paradigm, <laughs> fine. Paradigm shift. Since yeah. we're, we're obviously. Uh, in hot debate, so might as well debate some more. I know Blake had something he really wanted to talk about. Oh, we're going to uh, bake, huh? Yeah, yeah, your boy Bake getting the shit. So now that now All that right. hold on, now that uh, you know Blake Dog actually has a mic and we can hear him, we're gonna go ahead and let him lead this one. All right. So really, um, there was a little bit of a, uh, a back and forth between Saquon and uh, Baker. And it was pretty funny because uh, I think both of them rightfully deserve the uh, Rookie of the Year. And mm. uh, both of them, in their own right, had one hell of a year, you know. Both of them were outstanding. But it, I also have to include uh, Patrick Mahomes because there was two uh, awards that I thought Baker really should have just had locked down and... I don't think was in consideration for either because he didn't have the flash of Saquon, even mm. though uh, Patrick Mahomes had, you know, 14 more touchdowns than him. Baker Mayfield had 27 touchdowns and is on a list with people like Peyton Manning. Russell Plus he Wilson. had less. Did he have less games or did he start game one? No, he Baker only played half of those. Yeah, since yeah, like week seven. yeah. Yeah. 27 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, a quarterback rating of 
And we and can't dude, discount. It's in Cleveland. That's what I'm and saying. We can't Cleveland. discount that it's Cleveland. I don't think he gets considered because yeah. he doesn't have the flash of this running quarterback. Which, by the way, we already have our first victim in Joe Flacco. Rest in peace, <laughs> my friend. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Let's go back to Saquon on Park for a second. And well, his best receiver was, was Landry. Yeah, you're right. right. Well, yeah. Well, first of all, Patrick Mahomes is different because technically he's not a rookie. So, and he won the NFL MVP. But, yeah. So you can't necessarily – but that's still stupid because Patrick Mahomes didn't step on the field last year. So I consider him a rookie too. So right. I see this like is really that. his he's, first year, yeah. Just like I think Darius Geis should be able to win rookie of the year next year even though he's technically not a rookie. Like, I, I completely think that, agree. I think that's stupid. But um, two – Saquon's benefit in the only thing is that like literally the only reason they won any games is because of Saquon. Whereas yeah, which, which could be, which could be said about Baker too. Yeah, Tyrod, Ty Rod, you know, was a little part of that at the beginning of the season, but that was a coaching issue. But yeah. either way, like you're that. looking at, you know, it's, it's really hard to tell just because they're both rare in a rookie, but a rookie rushing for a thousand yards with a terrible offensive line and breaking ADR rushes and yeah. being on a team in New York City, you know, it's hard to beat that when it's a media voted thing. Oh, and I, yeah, I agree. Right. I, th- I right. think being in Cleveland is what is the whole reason that, I mean, you put him, you put Baker Mayfield in New York and it's totally different. Yeah, I agree. And the other thing is, too, to your benefit, B Dog, I think it's great that he didn't win the award. Because do what too. does that do to Baker Mayfield? That it just pisses makes them... him off even more, man. He's going to be exactly. feeling very dangerous next year. Fired up, man. Woo! Well, very, very dangerous. So I think. Way, three to one caps. Hey. We're all feeling dangerous tonight. Let's go. Boys. Well, that's right. But what I what I think is hilarious, though, is just to me, it's like no disrespect to Saquon Barkley. I think he's an incredible athlete and going to be an incredible running back in this league for a very he long time. He should have a chip on his shoulder. But at the end of the day, like. They took a running back number two when they desperately need a quarterback, and they won five games. Yeah. So, to me, it's like not that be good when they you, get a you can you can live. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything either because just yeah. because they're high rating quarterbacks are still a dime a dozen. Like they're not necessarily going to get the right one. Yeah, but, you're right. Um, dime a dozen or running backs are a dime a dozen. Running backs, <laughs> can, running backs can be, but special ones can, are not. You There's know what I'm saying? Value in a running back anymore, but well, uh, getting uh, getting uh, what, getting some in some value, I think, is worth it. But the question is, is it's not so much the value you get out of running back; it's the longevity you get out of running back. True, like, and gonna, I, I equate them to the same thing. So they're gonna. I mean, you get a great running back; that's great, but you're gonna run them into the dirt for five years on a cheap rookie deal, and then not want to pay him, aka Le'Veon Bell, right? So Baker is a quarterback. Hey. There's other quarterbacks who do what he does. There weren't many other running backs outside of Zeke and Gurley that did what Saquon did, but Saquon yeah. was a rookie, so that's why they gave him the award. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree. And I mean and, and like I said in the beginning, you know, I, I like both of them. I, I I kind of wish the Browns. I think the Browns could have had both of them, to be honest with you. They but you know, they could have gone Baker for one and Saquon uh, four. Whatever, dude. Okay, <laughs> I'm not in charge. All right, so you know, yeah. I'm not things and, like I and, should be. So whatever. All right, and, Cleveland, are you listening? And yes, Chip, I do agree that the Giants have the potential to be dangerous if they ever do get a quarterback. But Eli isn't just the biggest chump. He's not Blake Bortles. Okay? No, I agree. I agree. I just think he's on the downside, and they need to start planning oh, for that. And they, they should have started yeah. that planning last year. I would feel yeah. way worse right now if the the Giants had drafted Sam Darnold. Let me just put it You that are not lying at all. I would be way more upset yeah. about that than them having a running back that we can stop the run good. with. Because we proved, we proved in one of the two games we played the Giants that you could stop Saquon Barkley. Yeah, so. yeah. But if they had Sam Darnold, who I'd have to deal with for the next 15 years, who I do believe is probably the next great pocket passing, true like NFL quarterback. Not that Baker's not, but Baker's a different mold, is what I'm right, saying. Like right, you're the big right, guy, right, the right. Peyton Manning body. I'm definitely glad the Giants blew that one. And I, there's, <laughs> there's rumors you. that there's rumors that they're going to blow it again this year. That they might not draft a quarterback with their sixth pick again. Which yeah, but, but there's not. 
Do you think the uh, quarterback pool is big this year in the draft? I, I think there's enough people. I think there's at least three or four guys that could be taken in the first round in at least the top 15 that can be building blocks to a franchise with the right Redskins, pieces around them. I got to ask, you think the Redskins are going to take a quarterback? I very well think so. We'll I talk think so about too. that on a different day. Yeah. But yes, I do think. I tried. I just I think, tried. I had to I think, try. I think more than likely we are looking at, barring something very shocking, we're looking at a rookie quarterback coming in. But yeah. who that is and how that will play out, we'll, we have no we'll idea discuss, yet. Yeah. We'll discuss after the draft because that's when things are going to start to really pick up. Absolutely. But, um, you know, we'll have to see. I think, like what you were saying, though, about Pat Mahomes, I do think that that rookie of the year thing is dumb. Like, I've. I know Geis has already tried to start a petition with the NFL that he could be included in that because he's like all fired up that he's going to play well. He should year. be. Right, right. He he's, should he's, be. He's it's his right, man. Go yeah. do it. So, I, I'm with that, man. Let him do his thing. But I do think the NFC East is trending in the direction of old school football, you know, running the ball and mm-hmm. good defense. So it should be interesting to see because, you know, I watch some of these running backs out there and what they can do for your team. And I'm like, bro, if Geis was healthy, like, what would the end? Yes, you can always make the argument. Oh well, Redskins had AP and he rushed for a thousand yards. Yes, AP is Hall of Fame. Yeah, I want him back for sure. Like the one-two play. punch would be deadly. Especially though. if you're but he still, some value but he still value. had like three games where he had like thirty yards. Like I think Geis, that's not going to happen. So because he could do way more things than AP just because he's young. So it should be very interesting to see with what he's going to be like in the offense, but. Who's handing him the ball and who's passing it to him? We don't know. We'll discuss that later for sure. Yeah, yeah Will. I read that transcript. But um, I the one thing in D.C. that is drama right now is our man, pretty boy, hair flipping Bryce Harper. Bryce right freaking Harper, man. What are you doing to us, man? What's going on? We don't know. Like, he knows that we want to know, right? He of knows. He, does. he course, knows dude. that, like, literally every DC fan is is on is the big. edge of their seat and just praying that this Not goes just right. Every DC fan, every. That's true. Fan. Every baseball fan. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's got the league by the tip of his fingers, right? And now. he's, and he's just dragging it out. And then on top of that, the worst company in the world of all time, <laughs> EA, has been just. Flashing it at us at all times. Hey, hey, what's going to happen with Bryce? Huh? Huh? What's going on? What's going on? By advertising mm-hmm. him in their damn commercials, I just... It, oh, the, uh, you know, find out what team he's going to be on by the cover of, you know, the new MLB game. But to me, there's... Because what most Redskins fans don't realize is the situation that Nationals fans are in right now is exactly where we would have been last year if we did not trade for Alex Smith. Yep. We would have been waiting... And waiting it's like we're you know on the way to the gallows not to get our head chopped off and we're just waiting and waiting and wait and then it, you know it's coming it's just a, right it's the exact same thing that cousins was gonna yeah. do but shocking for some crazy reason the front office didn't want that to happen i mean they actually made a good move that was a great move. Him. so no you know what you can equate this to man it's when lebron left cleveland yeah you could definitely say that yeah when you did the decision the first yeah. time. And yep. I mean, this is this is the thing though. This it, is it, and, dude. Chalk always always makes this point. I mean, it's it's how do you want to be remembered in DC? Do you want to be mm-hmm. the Kirk Cousins that leaves and chases money? Mm-hmm. Or do you want to be the Ovechkin that stays here, brings a championship home, and is the hero for literally all of time in Washington, That's right. DC? I mean, is that That's it's right, what you man. want to do? And what's ironic about this whole situation is like you can really not First of all, the Nationals have offered him three hundred million dollars. Yeah, I mean, I mean like, that's, that's just not nothing. That's nothing. Yeah, exactly. Like that's a ton of, but that's so, like his great 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 grandchildren are going to spend that. But <laughs> money aside, the Nationals are actually probably the team in which he has the best chance to win a ring. I agree. That's the thing. We have so much great young talent. Our pitching rotation is <laughs> out of control, and we just got a new pitcher. I can't remember his name. So I don't thank you for that. Host on baseball, but. Either way, like, there's no doubt, and even the baseball world would tell you that. Like, if he wants turnkey to bet closest chance to win a title, it's in D.C. If he does it in D.C., it's the team that drafted him when he was 16 years old. He was married right. here. He became a man here, essentially, in this city. And then he is remembered, I like, I kid you not, like, on the level of Babe Ruth. I truly believe that. If he were to yeah. win titles in D.C., that's how he would be remembered here. I agree. In front. I think he's... 
I, that's I, the legacy he yeah. could have, or he could have the legacy of being just another guy, guy on the Yankees, you know, or yeah, just another exactly. guy on whatever right. other team. Like, yeah, and, and then again, like he'll still be a star and... wherever he goes, but here not he is the, the star. Here. Not, you know, here he not is the to star. enshrinement level. Yeah. We're talking enshrinement, man. You're right. You'll be yeah. remembered forever. Yeah. Forever. The great Bambino, forever. the great Bryceino, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> that's people, it, dude. The Sultan of Swan. Instead of pointing at the, you know, fence when kids get up to bat in D.C., they would do the little, you know, Bryce That's Harper awesome. hair flip. Like, yeah. that would be his legacy. And to me, like, how – I hope he's considering that, and I don't know. I think he's leaving, though. But that's maybe D.C. pessimism. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Know. I'm preparing blame myself for the, for the axe to drop, honestly. I don't blame you for the pessimism, man. Yeah. Yeah, of course, because why wouldn't you be pessimistic in the city? I mean, they're legitimately cursed. Like, Alex Smith breaks his leg, John Wall slips at home and tears his Achilles. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. The city is legitimately cursed. That, like, that it is. terrible what happened to John Wall. Like, can you, can you get that? Like, I, I just, there's no words, man. Like, they yeah. give him this massive contract to build the future of a team around him, and he's at home, and he slips and tears his Achilles, 12-month recovery. <laughs> so like, ridiculous. Bro, so DC, like... I saw a tweet that was like, when that happened yesterday, it was like, please don't let Bryce Harper sign somewhere else today or DC might collectively explode. Like, <laughs> right. It's literally the, the the most tragic situation you could have. But I don't know. I think Bryce is going to end up in the Phillies, which is even worse because he's going to Philadelphia. But that really, to me, seems the closest bidder right now. But he yeah. was meeting with the Giants. Now he's meeting with the Padres. You know, like. Who knows, is, man? Spring training is in like two weeks, the so yeah. they need to like make a decision. But I hope he chooses. He's to stay, young, dude. But... He wants to shop around. Let him do his thing. I, I think you guys have a little stronger shot of retaining him than you might give yourself credit for. I but... think they do too. But and maybe he is doing what you're saying. Maybe he just wants to be wooed a little bit to see yeah, what's out there. He's young, and man, he, and he'll realize the grass is greener. They hit the market, but... dude, and he'll realize. I think. I, I again, I'm going to play that LeBron card, man, because you know people can get vilified very quickly in yeah. a sport if you leave when they're relying on you for a championship. Mm. Boo! Different well, clothes, and, different clothes. <laughs> I mean, and, and to your point, be like LeBron James came out and said something like that today because of all these crazy trades that happened in the NBA. Like not Kevin even, Durant's getting upset, man. Every. Yeah. And all the time. He, LeBron James is like, you know, when we get attacked as players for not being loyal to a franchise, but when they're willing to literally trade you in the middle of a game, like Harrison Barnes yesterday oh, got traded. Poor, poor guy, like he, was, man. he was like sitting on the bench and they put up on the screen, like traded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like cold blooded, bro. Yeah. Like, I... So, you know, I can, I, I get it, but I, I think there's just, I, it's not fair. Of course it's not fair. But I think there has to be some differentiation against generational superstars. Like, right. there's a reason why LeBron went back home because he felt bad. He yeah. was like, "Bro, yeah, yeah I got to go back." And yeah. so, I it, when you have like that talent, you really need to consider what you're doing to the fan base. And I just hope that he sticks. But we'll, we'll see. see. Jinx. But one, you know, let <laughs> me a coke. I love when that happens. Oh my god! You know? But uh. You know, one thing that I do also hope that sticks is the XFL. The XFL. Now, I've been pumped about the XFL for a while, and if you've been watching the pod, you know, I think this is the next the next wave, man. This is the new wave. But it could be our boy Bob Stoops announces today that he Mm. is re is joining the Dallas franchise down there. Of course, he'd go to Dallas. Of course, he would go to Dallas. Why can't he be coming to DC, man? But he's going in, what is he? He's going to be a general manager yeah, and, and head coach. coach of the Dallas mm-hmm. based franchise in the XFL. So mm-hmm. that is pretty good news for the XFL, I think. And I watched the press conference and, like, it was kind of, I kind of laughed a little bit because, like, Ed, I mean, Oliver Fisher, I think is his name. And I literally saw it for the first time today. So if I got that right, I'm even going to give myself a pat on the back. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The, the, the commissioner the Oliver the, Luck, the, the, Oliver Luck. So oh, I was close. There you go. But the commissioner of the XFL, like I was watching this press conference and I was like, okay, this is like actually legit. But when he announces Bob Stoops, you know, like they played music, like, <laughs> like a like walk-up a music. WWE. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I was like, 
is Stone Cold coming out? Like, what's about to happen? Uh, yeah, of course, you know. They played walk-up music for yes, the press conference. Yeah. See, I've, all I yeah. see is the press conference uh, here. Uh, uh, I can just ESPN. see it, dude. dude. I can just hear and it. And it just like, starts you know, with he, Bob's, too. He, 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 back he, yeah, he, talked for like, he, he talked for like 10 minutes and listed off the bajillion accolades that Stoops had. I mean, he went deep, man. He went to, like, when he was a defensive coordinator at Florida in, like, 96. I'm like, bro, okay. Like, we get it. We get we know it. Who, we, know we know who Bob, who Bob Stoops, Stoops is. is. You're right. not introducing Johnny Smith, who's the nephew <laughs> of somebody. Like, you just say Bob Stoops, former head coach of Oklahoma. Everyone's like, oh, okay. We got it. I don't it. need to know. I don't need to know what, every, what he did on every practice on Wednesday. You know, I don't need to know all that information. But, you know, he comes up, that, and, like, he's like, now I introduce Bob. And it was literally, like, it was like a like a melody rock music. I was like, "Are you serious, bro?" <laughs> Stick really? figure. Thank you for that, host, bro. <laughs> you're gonna play. You're gonna play music. It cracked me up, man. I yeah. was dying. But was- other than little cheesy things like that, like I think what Bob Stoop was saying is like, I trust Vince McMahon and yeah. the other people in leadership. Like they're not gonna let this fail. So. Yeah, they already let it leave. fail once. This is my thing: yeah. is they already did this once yeah. and it failed miserably. Now, yeah, they did it so oh, dumb, too. Oh, yeah, it was terrible. I mean, it, it was, was so bad. But now... terrible. Yeah, now now it's really... It, it seems like they're taking their time. It seems like mm. they're looking at all the failures of the NFL, the things that the mm. NFL is doing wrong, and they're like, okay, we're going to do something that makes that better, or we're going to do yep. something that is better for uh, you know the fans, or whatever the case may be. And as long as they don't take it to the ridiculousness and try and mix wrestling with with football yeah. like they did, I can't see this thing not failing because there is a market for a better product than what the NFL is putting on. Mm-hmm. Again, this whole year we thought it was rigged. I still think it was rigged. But if the, if if we think that more than us have to be thinking that, it's not like we're the only two people that picked up on that shit. Which is ironic that we're like, oh, the NFL is rigged. Let's go to the thing that's actually rigged, which is fake wrestling yeah. football. <laughs> like, but it's but, not going to be rigged. But yeah, no, I agree. And the thing is, is that the AFL is going to play, the AAF, sorry, is going to play a role in this because that is going to give people a taste of football in February. So they're going to at least, it won't, because I feel like that was a big part of the figure last time is that they're like, oh, here, here's more football. And everyone's like, uh, what? The Super Bowl was like two months ago. Like, we, we're not in football mode. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the AAF is going to be coming up and that's going to introduce people to that idea. And then the XFL will enter in with a better product. Yep. And it's going to be like, oh, okay. So, and I just, it'll be very interesting to see how it goes down. Like, if they're going to start building their own stadiums and yeah. All that is right. really, really interesting. The real interesting thing is how they're going to draw talent away from the NFL and how they're going to draft players and things like that. Because, like I said, on the I don't know how they night, can draw people away, man. Yeah. Well, money. I mean, you know, um, what's his name? Jim Kelly, you know, the quarterback of the Buffalo Bills who took the Bills to four yeah. Super Bowls and lost yeah, all yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. Play, he played in an alternate league, you know, the Trump League. He played in that league right out of college because they offered him more money. So right. money will talk. But I think what it's going to be, too, is I think they're going to change the rules in which players can get drafted. And I mentioned this on the stream the other night. Maybe Jeez. what your contention was should, that, yeah, maybe not freshman year, but sophomore year. Yeah, I mean, I could see I could see there being a market for certain players to be able to come out early. Like, you mentioned that guy last night. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence. I He is 18, but he's 6'9", and I think he could legitimately play in the NFL right now. Like, I do believe that. I don't, I'm not the only one who believes that. A lot of people believe that. Like, if you're already being talked about in the 2021 draft class, <laughs> when was the last time you heard anyone being talked about in 2021? Like, that far ahead. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, Ever. That kid is going to be a first round, like the number one overall draft pick, barring some catastrophic injury. Like, yeah. And I mean, and I agree. Be. Like, I, and for we'll me, I know what the chat's ice. already going to say. Like, they're not, you know, most people are they're not dumb. ready. And I agree with you. Most people are not ready. But when you have people like that who are yes. obviously enough, big enough, obviously could handle it, I think that letting them go a little early would, would be a benefit, especially to the XFL. Like, I don't know about yeah. the NFL. They'll, they'll probably never do it. But if the XFL wants to have a little bit of an edge and get those guys before they could go to the NFL, that's a yeah. good way to do it. So, and to, and to my point, let me make this very clear. Like, I'm not saying like, this is going to happen a lot. Like, I'm talking about like the LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony situation. When right. Right. You have like three Kobe guys Bryant. that come. Yeah. Kobe Bryant that come from like, 
generational type superstar people that can make that Dwayne jump. Wade. Yeah, like that's what I'm talking about. Like I'm not saying that it's gonna happen like, hey, I just won state. I'm gonna go pro. <laughs> like Uncle Rico ain't coming to the NFL or XFL. I'm just right, talking right. about like insane, insane talent. But um it's just gonna be interesting to see how that all plays out because yeah. you know, come draft day and its kid goes number like number one in the XFL and then late first round in the NFL they're going to have to make a choice. And that's, I think, as you always say, Chip, you know, competition breeds better products. That's so what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. Capitalism, baby. <laughs> right. You know, it's going to be interesting to see. I think it's, I think a lot of people are still in the, and eh, it's going to flop mode, but I think Vince McMahon is like, nah, I'm going to do this right this time. Yep. And we're going to get the, and he's getting, he's making the first step in getting the right coaches. I would lo- I'm very interested to see how this domino falls and getting more people to come because yeah. like now that Bob's yeah. so like that legitimizes the product in my opinion. You're like, I oh, agree. Okay. So who else is going to come? Like what other former like retired or up and coming coaches or whatever are going to go over there? It should be very, very interesting. Yeah. But I'm pretty excited to see where it goes. Definitely. So I think that's pretty much it for sports for today. So, yeah. I know it's Man, it's been a long winded one, but we had a lot to talk about. And uh, before we transition into the gaming segment of this, we have to throw a shout out to our sponsor, Catch Fish and Chill. Yes, uh, absolutely. So if you don't know, we are you know this is a clothing company. Love you guys out there. Uh, you know they make clothing and stickers, really high quality stuff. Um, all of, you know the Catch Fish and Chill brand is really all about just having a good time. Uh, obviously centered around fishing, but um, also around chilling mm-hmm. and the gear, Very much chilling. the gear and the stickers. I mean, I'll just pull up some stickers here. He's got really good stuff uh, available. It's all very reasonably priced <laughs> as well. Um, yeah. And I can promise you the clothing is very, very high quality. Yes, yeah, uh, definitely. It's premium quality clothing, but like Chip is saying, like, you know, it's, if you first glance, you're like, if I don't fish, I don't like this. That's not necessarily the case because, yeah. trust me, we know it's very much more about chilling than anything. And I would highly recommend watch following their Instagram account just because if you do yeah, like it's fishing, pretty good. it's legit. I mean, it's pretty you know, good. it is legitimate, like deep sea um, catch and tuna. So if good you like people, fishing, quality, it's a great, quality it's a great, great stuff to check out. But if you just want some comfortable, chill lounge clothes, like their long sleeve with the hoodie is the, my favorite shirt. It's so comfortable. You definitely want to check it out. All reasonably priced. And it's helping out our sponsors. Use That's our right. Code. <laughs> you use our code real talk WCC for 20% discounts. off of all of your orders. So not, what's already somewhere without some help, what's already reasonably priced is even cheaper because we're in with the sponsor. So that's get right. Get in there, order some gear and uh, be repping catch fish and chill because uh, in a few months, you're going to want to say that you, you you've we're been in. in on this before it blew up. Cause it's coming very yeah. soon. Yeah, if you That's if right. you've ever seen anyone driving around with a salt life sticker on the back of their car, you will very soon see cars driving around with catch fish and chill on their it's car, coming. and you it's will coming. be an OG ground floor investor, so to speak. So definitely get on that. That's right. But speaking of things that are not of good value, we can talk Ooh. about our favorite company in the world. Ooh, we've yeah. already oh, so we've oh already my. touched on it a little uh, bit. Because anytime we could take a dig at EA, we're going to do it. I mean, honestly. Uh, I mean, we, we, know it's we, coming. It's inevitable, we, man. We could, we could change the name of our podcast to, like, We Hate EA. We <laughs> Hate EA, dude. <laughs> the We Hate EA podcast. It's yes. possible. That is. that it is. It, there's that much content that you could have a whole podcast based off that. So, so in the words of PewDiePie, uh, Electronic Arts did an oopsie. Uh, they released <laughs> <laughs> Battlefield Five. Uh, amidst tons of snafus along the way and Shocker. announced Wednesday that Battlefield 5 is officially a failure. Um, it fell <laughs> 1 million <laughs> copies short of its sales goal. Uh, uh, and after this announcement, as you can stop. see on the screen here, the stock plummeted about 20%. Um, Oof. I mean, just Good. fell off a damn cliff because, awesome. once again, EA is a it's terrible player. company. Good night. Yeah. Now, this is especially disheartening for us because 
we are fans of the Battlefield franchise. Uh, Specifically, B Dog. As yeah, and we didn't want this game to fail. So don't we? I don't take delight in the fact that Battlefield Five uh, failed. That game failed. But oh man, it broke my heart. There are so many things that they did wrong in the lead up to this game. So the first thing is the obvious uh, uh, trailer that they put out at E at at E three. Now, nobody in their in the gaming world, at least in my opinion, cares if they have female characters in the game. That does not mm. even remotely bother me. Now, there are nope. some people out there who are freaking out about that issue specifically, but I don't think that that's the majority of the people. The no. thing that I had a problem with is that this chick is running around with a bionic arm or whatever the hell it is, a prosthetic arm, you know, right. jumping through windows, beating off tanks. Like, I don't care if that's a dude with a prosthetic arm. That did not happen. <laughs> like, that was not a thing. And this is a series that's supposed to mm-hmm. pride itself on realism, right? Yeah, it's like, not. They went to Call of Duty. That's what I'm saying. Right. And that's not what people wanted. Now, the game, I will mm-hmm. say, plays very well. I like it. I mean, it's good. I have a hard time with Battlefield because I'm colorblind, but I like Shit. it. It's not a bad game. So I don't even own it anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's shocking. So That's gone. I mean, that tells you right there enough about the trade. I, I mean, I traded in for Resident Evil, so uh, whatever. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not a bad trade. Um, yeah. But, yeah. again, the, the worst part about this is not is not that trailer. Again, fans would get over that, right? Like, okay, you put a bionic arm person in the, in the thing, whatever. <laughs> the problem was the response <laughs> to it, right? The problem was their response to it. They basically said, you're ignorant dumbasses who don't know anything about history. This is all real. <laughs> And if you don't like it, don't buy the game. Well, they didn't buy the damn game. Good job. Yeah. Okay. Thanks Liter- for the advice. Appreciate it. Yeah, literally the only yeah. reason I bought it is two days after it came out, it was on sale for half price. And I was like, well, <laughs> shit, if it's half price, I'll buy yep. it. Yeah. yeah. Same I mean, 76 it, piece. It, of course, EA, they make beautiful games that have no content. Like, it reminds me of, like, a Cadbury egg, you know? It's, like, beautiful on the outside, and then, yeah. like, you mm-hmm. poke it, and there's nothing inside, and it all just spills out. It's just, like, yeah. all goo on the inside. Like, yep. that's what EA is. They can put together a perfect... Like, you see a trailer of an EA game, and you're like, you're like Yo, dude, you're it's drooling. gonna be a great game. And then you turn it on, and it's garbage. Now, it's we, can only, we can only hope that Anthem will not be the case. But, I don't know. I'm not buying it day one. I'll tell you that much. But you know, nope. the big thing, the big thing about uh, Battlefield, or at least what they were hoping, was that next month when they released the Battle Royale, it would somehow galvanize the audience. Mm-hmm. Apex Battle Royale. Who, a- who plays Battle Royale? Apex no Legends came in and kind of ruined that no, plan, didn't they? No, no one no. plays Battle Royales. What, what, what is about. even this Apex thing that man you're mentioning? What is That's, that about? So, so what? What you know? The Battle Royale is supposed <laughs> to be the savior for EA. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Apex Legends came in. Sorry, and, uh, buddy. See you later. Just Sorry, crapped buddy. all over that idea. Realm Royale did that too. All these other games came out like for free in the meantime, like. If I, it's to the point now, like if you want to do a BR, you just got to put it out for you. Like, you can't, you're not going to be able to charge anyone for a battle royale anymore. The, the, the best one on the market, technically Fortnite, free. Apex, yeah. popping, free. Realm Royale, yeah. pretty fun. Got our first win last night, free. Yeah. So How up on the screen now, you're for? watching some old video of us play Apex in case you haven't seen it. So yeah, Apex, I saw, um, Oh, pumpkin playing some Apex earlier today. So. Well, yeah, I mean, that's my thing is, you know, they released the game. First of all, I had never heard of this game before Monday. Um, and, like literally and, the day it came out. And we were all, you know, we're all Titanfall fans. Oh, yeah. Like, we like Titanfall. We played yeah. it a pretty good amount. Um, yeah. But I, did, I, I woke up on Monday and Chalk sends me a link. Hey, this new game just came out today, free. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. And as Chuck says, if it's for hmm. free, it's Good for point. me. Just, just, like, just, just like, like some other game called Fortnite that Fortnite. I convinced you guys to download. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Dude, I, I've heard of Fortnite. I I'm know telling you, is. Chuck keeps his ear ear to the ground when it's free. You know, his motto is, if it's for free, it's for me. So I might get that tattooed on me, man. That's my life hey, motto. Like, right I, forehead, like you can literally come up to me and be like, hey, Chuck, I got this piece of paper. It's free, though. Bro, hey, it if it's for free, I mean, it's I, for me. God. It's for me, man. I love swag, stuff we all get, stuff Chalk gets. That's what he wants. That's right. 
But there is, mm-hmm. there really is a big lesson in here in this release for any AAA developer. I mean, EA, please, for the love of God, be paying attention to this. Like, I'm not saying you have to release every game for free. Obviously, that's not a, any type of business model for a major corporation. I get it. But this game released for free, ran perfectly, no glitches really that I came across, no mm-hmm. huge major hiccups with the server. This thing ran like a dream on day one. Yep. And the fans rewarded that. It sold. It was over two two million unique installs in the first forty eight hours. Mm-hmm. Top view count on Twitch for at least two or three days. It still mm-hmm. might be up there. Every streamer we yeah, know is playing nuts. it. Yeah, you know, yeah. everybody was playing it, man. Nin- Ninja is a, a Apex partner now. I saw them post a, a video today. So they got everybody on it, and like what you're saying, which is even more impressive, is that that many people played it with zero advertisement. That's what I'm saying. Yep. They spent be- no money on ads at all. Be- because it's a free Battle Royale. So I was like, well, duh, I'll download it. But like you're saying, it ran smooth with that many people on. Matchmaking is easy. Adding friends is the easiest ever been on any yeah. video game, in my opinion. Communicating and- with people in the game that don't have mics through the, the pinging system. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is so right. fantastic. It that did. it cannot be stated how awesome that is. Yeah, I like think Fortnite they did a great job on those things. Yeah, they did a great job on it. So respawn, you know, they got screwed over when they released Titanfall just two, which is a good game, and Meh. we played we played it. You didn't really give it a shot, B. Like you no. didn't give it a concede, uh, me. I, I, I can me see and, that. Yeah, I didn't. I, no. Me, like I beat the campaign, and me and Chip used to play the, the online all the time, and it's a good game, but it just came out terribly timed. And so when that happened, they took a step back and were like, "Yo, we got to figure out something better." And then they just in the dormant background, they did this. Now they're coming out with potentially a new Titanfall and a new Star Wars. You know, called the Jedi Order, I think, or something like that. What was it called, Chief? Uh, I think it's it's uh, shoot, I can't remember. It's it's something it's like Jedi the, something. Yeah, so now they might be making a surge here on the back end because of realizing that they made mistakes. Unlike EA, who makes mistakes, it was like, meh, whatever. Customers are dumb. <laughs> like, well, but you got to remember, you got to remember though that EA is still the publisher of yeah, I know, of Respawn but, Games. So yeah, know. but when I. But at the same time, though, like, I still feel like they have – I don't know if EA was really involved in the idea of them giving that out game out for free. Like, I think they'll be involved in the publishing of their paying games. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Respawn is still having a big say in that. So we'll just mm-hmm. see. But, yeah, that game is dope. Like, I want to play it. So we'll definitely be doing that on stream a lot. But you No, know, like, that's right. Even though, like, I do want to give a plug though, like, Realm Royale is legit. If you watched stream last night, you saw me and Chu get our first. What's it called? Crown. Crown victory? Royale. Yeah. Crown. Crown. Sounds Royale. like uh, Crown Royal. I know. Maybe you should drink some Crown For Royal. For real, that might be that might be the new, the new move might, we just have. Move, man. Every time we but get a Crown Royale, we drink Crown, a crown Royale. Because if have if a you Crown watch, Night, dude. If, if you look at that game from like a, a upper vantage point, like it's cartoony, like. Fortnite, but it's in a different form of cartoony. But yeah. like you see when people get knocked, they turn to chickens, and you're just like, okay, that game's dumb. But like the chicken knock to me is a whole other element of difficulty because if you play that game and you see what it's like when that little chicken is running around, man, they are hard to kill. It's much harder than when the guy goes on when people go on four knee, you know, on all fours in a Fortnite. It's like pop dead you know the double right. tap you know, exactly the right. double tap where a chicken me and chip when we got our victory last night we had to chase one guy halfway up a hill and oh yeah, i have a clip difficult. where we shot we we literally chickened him four times the uh, fourth time times. he finally didn't even chicken he just died which i guess that's yeah. the thing but literally we killed him we had to chase him he got healed mm-hmm. we had to kill him again he we chased him he got healed we had to kill him again it was the craziest thing ever yeah, it was it was it's a fun it's a fun mix up game, but most importantly, for the real talk audience who loves mediocre gameplay, it's very passive and is very accessible to Everybody. the non super competitive Everybody. gamer. Like I love Fortnite and I will still play Fortnite, but it's incredibly frustrating when you're playing somebody and they build a mansion right in front of you. Yeah, like, when they're that's super not sweaty, yeah. You. Either not mm-hmm. that's not gonna happen to you in Realm Royale. So if you wanna have a, a a BR experience that is not nearly as frustrating because Apex is frustrating too because yeah, it's hard. we it die is. a lot in Apex. But, but if you want something a little more passive, Rome Royale, it's free, which is 
kind of reminds me too from a year ago when we started the pod. You know, we were real talk with Chute and Chuck. Yeah. When we used to implore people to download Fortnite, we begged, you know, right? Right. And, right. We, I, and uh, you know, a little plug here, real quick, is on Monday we're going to be doing our year anniversary. So if you want to see the videos that we're talking about, I'm going to show you where we, me and Chuck, literally for three like episodes four, straight, yeah, four three weeks. or four, we did a segment on Fortnite and why you need to download it. And, and, and obviously our you, reach was is, so huge that everybody started to download it. It's going to be is, good. This is pre-Battle Pass Fortnite. Yeah, this is good. pre-Map Change Fortnite. It's really like, good. Oh, you need to download this game. Pre dropping weapons Fortnite. Yeah, pre, <laughs> that that was a thing. Pre dropping weapons. Yep. Yeah, that's yep. that's how that's how Teaser. early we were. So that's how early we were on Fortnite. Hey, don't so say listen, anything listen, else about that, dude. Leave listen to us now as we tell that's you. That's a teaser, Apex, man. That's a teaser, dude. We tell you about Apex and we tell you about Rem Royale. We know what we're talking about. You want to get on them and get on them now. So that way in a year when it's incredibly hard, you'll at least have some foundation. You'll have Yeah, and you'll have something to look back on some time when it was much easier than it is now. That's right. That's right. That's right, man. But, you know, Fortnite, though, they're going to have to keep innovating to stay ahead of the Battle Royale game. and they definitely Which they do. Which they definitely they... did that with the Marshmallow concert. Yo, I bumped, hey! I bumped, dude, I bumped Marshmallow literally all day today at work, bro. I, that's all I listened to at work. Today. Yeah, man. So yeah, oh, if you if you didn't see this, it's up on the screen now. Our video, uh, it's this video is also on YouTube. Woo! So if you don't, you know, really want to uh, watch it, or you know, you you can't really tell right now. You can watch it later. But this was honestly one of the coolest things that I've ever seen in a video game. Mm-hmm. Bar none. I mean, not even close. Uh, the the way that they were able to bring the community together for this event and actually have it be... I mean, this was a cool-ass concert. And like Chalk said, it was I never awesome. I never listened to Marshmello prior to this. Ever. I mean, Either I don't I, even think I've yeah. heard a song by him. I've seen him on the Fortnite shit. He wears the helmet. I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. I get it. But I never have listened to his music. And after this, just like Chalk said, dude, I have been bumping this dude because mm. this concert was lit. And as soon as I can see him live, you better believe I'm going. Because yeah. that's how cool this was. No, that's right. And we were texting and like we were talking about it. I think even on stream, we were like, oh, there's a con- there's a, you know, a concert in three days. Like, yeah, what's that? That's going to be whatever. And yeah. that day. You know, it just so happened that the first concert was at one o'clock when Tally takes her naps on weekends. I texted Blake. I was like, yo, you want to go check out this? He was like, hey, man, yo, you want to go to the concert? Like, yeah, right. And we were like, yeah. And so, like, yeah, might as well. It's a world event. You want to go see what it is. I was not expecting that. Dude. Not no. even find remotely close. And then suddenly, dude, it gets lit. Oh, my it, God. It Here takes a lot. Yeah. It's coming up right in the video. It takes a lot for me to like legitimately be like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> like, that was, you're, we we yeah. were freaking out while we were playing this thing, dude, because it was just insane. So well done, epic, and mad props to Marshmallow, dude, because like honestly, like I just when I saw him at that Fortnite tournament with Ninja or whatever, I was like, "All right, what, look at this guy." Yeah, like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he was just like, oh, you know, just try this thing, and it was. He's got to be getting so many hits on Spotify this week. Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. His YouTube's probably blowing up. I mean, honestly, you know, the crazy thing is, is that there are a lot of kids who this was legitimately their first concert, you know, And, and this is the thing for me, like. I have not been to any of the world events yet. I've missed them all, mm. and I never really cared. I was like, I'll just watch it right. on YouTube. It's fine. Yeah, yeah exactly. You don't need to, but whatever. if I had missed this, just and again, I, I was at golf practice when this happened, so Chalk and Blake are texting me like, bro, oh, this is the craziest the shit ever. Out, dude. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. okay, if they're reacting shit. like this, this is something that I need to see. And luckily, thank God, Epic decided to rerun it at 2 a.m. Eastern time, 1 a.m. my time, and... Blake joined me for that one too, so he got to go Great. twice in, in the day. Dude, um, it was awesome. It's an and, experience, and that's bro. the footage you're seeing now. And that's exactly what I'll say. It it was not just an event in the game where you're like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. It was a legitimate experience, yeah. and I feel like okay. I, we actually did something by, by doing this. Up, man, oh, it was it was wild. And, Ten million and, unique views, and that's Concurrent. not counting the people that watch it on stream. I know we had like 15 people oh. in the chat. Oh. My God, I know. And so here's the and the other thing too, man. 
he twice he was getting challenged. Yeah, you know, that was some pre-recorded stuff, right? That was some pre-recorded. Yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. He, oh, whoa, whoa. Nah, dude, that was a lot of work, a lot of time and effort. And again, you say Epic has to stay ahead. If they keep doing stuff like this, man. Mm-hmm. That's what. That's it, the question is if this, just, going, this set the bar question, so high for world right. events now. The question is which musician's next. Yeah. And if yeah. it was so successful, man, like, could you imagine like Bono up on this but thing? But see, dude? in the other part of the, <laughs> right? It'd be crazy. But the other part of this, the, the other what? thing about this is, you know, everybody's always trying to say, oh, Fortnite's dying, Fortnite's dying. With shit like this, they're never going to die. If they can continually innovate... I mean, again, this is the coolest thing that I ever saw in a video game ever. Ever. And if they can continue to innovate like this... And they're never gonna go away. It's never. He's gonna like, go away. He gives a shout out to Pleasant Park, and he's like, "We see you out there." I mean, it was great. It was just like a concert, dude. Yeah, the, yeah you know. It was, so, was like you're saying, just like a concert. Like I said, it had 10 million unique right. players yeah. in oh, there. So it's a, purpose. it's a concert. Yeah. The most attended concert prior to this was 3.2 million people. So they tripled that. that. Yeah. So and again, that doesn't count all the viewers on Twitch. Twitch, yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know if like U two is not coming on Fortnite. Sorry, like that's not. Yeah, that's not. But Kings, uh, thank you for the dono, man. Kings, thank Thank you 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 for them biddies. Oh yeah, thanks, Kings, man. Appreciate you. But yeah, I do think it's gonna be like. I wouldn't be surprised if like Drake does it. You know, he's got some Fortnite background. Yeah, something like that, dude. Like I do think. Stuff that would do that. Someone's I could gonna, see, you know, more EDM guys like Daft Punk or something like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, guys with big, you know, cosmetic heads just because then they can become a skin in the game. So, um, it was dope though, man. I was blown away. I hope we. I can't wait to see what they do next for sure because I hope it's something like that. Absolutely. Because that, because that to me is entertainment, and you know, to transition to our last segment, like entertainment news like to me if fortnite can provide that type of entertainment no one else is like that they will always be in the front runner of vrs because you can do that i agree i mean it's just such a good way to engage the community that if they can continue that the game's never going to die i mean yeah not everybody in the world's going to play it probably but more you know enough people will play to keep it alive if they continue to do that kind of stuff right yeah speaking of keeping things alive and what is alive and what's not alive. One of the best Super Bowl teaser trailers for sure. Oh my God, bro. Bye. Something, something that pretty much everyone is waiting for. Bro. Is Avengers Endgame. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and let this one play uh, with sound so you guys can Everybody see it. Everybody stay quiet. Stay quiet. It. Let it run. <laughs> let it run. Exactly. Here we go. Some people move on, but not us. Not us. (laughs) Oh, my God. It's beautiful. Bro. I'll tell you, I, I, man, that, bro, there's, I, there's really no words, man. It's going to be <laughs> sick. Next, next, next topic. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. if you got really? anything in the chat to add to that, so, just talking about a concert and a video game, talk about the, one of the best experiences you'll probably ever have at a movie theater. We'll I be hope so. Ever. I really do hope so. And I think that it's very possible, honestly. I, it's I, I think it's just gonna supersede the expectations and just blow everybody out of the water. By the way, caps four to three in overtime. Let's go. Hey, you have let's to go. Say you had to give Marvel credit because for a while there it was like, bro, like you are oversaturating this market. Like, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like pow, punch you in the they face. They knew what they Black, were doing. <laughs> Black Panther. <laughs> pow, punch you in the punch. face. <laughs> Avengers. Like they hit you with some of their best movies back to back to lead up into this one. And yeah, you just know, like I get goosebumps thinking about it. Cause oh. it's going to be, and again, it's going to be so insane. If DC uh, had taken this same approach, I feel like justice league would have landed awesome. the same way, but yeah. you know what they should have done on the DC side. Obviously I'm a DC guy. 
they should have gone with no name dudes, just totally random off the wall, random people kept it low key, driven storyline, make it dark. You would have had a, a smashing success. Yeah, if they, if kept, they had done it kept dark, Ben Affleck as Batman. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah, that sets the bar pretty high when you got an Academy Award winner coming in to to play after another Academy Award winner. So you're expecting to just be like the greatest film ever. And then right. they just and, rushed the story. I mean, they built, yeah. they went, they jumped to the end of the story before giving us the beginning. Exactly. Yeah, it's real disappointing. But they're going to try to reboot it, you know, which essentially well, is what they, movies are today is just reboots of everything. Of course. So, so we're just going to keep because this is all has happened before and all will happen again. It's the same hey, thing. For although movies, the so. the other the next movie we're going to talk about nice. is not really a reboot of anything. Other, you know, this is actually a new entry into the Marvel universe. And talk that about is Captain Trump, Marvel. Bro. Yes, Captain So, Marvel. I don't Bro. really know much about it, but we're going to watch the trailer. Bro. Time to show these boys how we do it. You ready? Young Nick Fury, Hi, man. Foster, Sorry, Samuel Jackson. Sorry, Nick Fury. <laughs> Further. Faster. She does look like a bad bitch, I'll tell you that much. Nick Fury with two eyes. Oh, bro. And it doesn't. It also doesn't hurt that Brie Larson is just gorgeous. smoke show. Plus, my man Jude Law, man. Gotta, good look look for you. Did you have a rough day? Oh, I guess they got a longer Fury? commercial. Yeah, dude. Oh, There's a new one at the Super Bowl. Space I must have missed the second half. Scrolls are infiltrating your planet. Better shapeshifters. It looks amazing. Oh, it does. It does. Prove you're not a scroll. It looks so good. It's a photon blast. We're in trouble oh, here, boys. I'm at 9% battery I'm just battery to take your word for that. Scroll cannot do it. Yeah, it does look amazing. We are Kree. Get on my I'm Mac, strong. yeah. Why don't you not plug it in? United. It's a long story. Maybe if you were on earlier, you would know, dude. Okay. 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 10, 10 still I have this power. 8%. But I don't know where it came it's not from. Good. <laughs> I've never seen it. Rest in like peace, my. Okay, Colson. I see you, Colson. No, Colson, baby. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, dude, this is going to be so good. Come on. What is this? The shield logo. Does announcing your identity Her and Ant Man are going to make everything right? Said the space Spoilers. soldier who was wearing a rubber suit. Get tickets now. Hey, look who it is, Nick Fury. Same that looks that looks Hello. pretty damn good, folks. I have to say. Yeah, and since we are all, apparently all of a sudden on a time crunch, we're going to go ahead and transition to what we felt like was definitely. Which was definitely. The best we'll go. the best the best trailer slash commercial slash whatever of the Super Bowl. So I think it's important to also mention both our relationship to this next thing, man, with your dad in love with it and my family being mm -hmm. sci fi guys. This kinda hit home for me. It for hit me sure. right in the you for know. Sure. All right, here we go. Here we go. Turn up the volume, man. Make it loud. Oh, it's loud, baby. Hello, yeah, me too. I thought I thought my TV was broken, dude. I was like, yo, was what? Like, CBS like, is off the air? I was like, are we being abducted by aliens? What is happening? <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. What? This is the best, the perfect commercial, dude. Witness an empty space filled with thousands of screaming people. Oh, it was so Amen, good. Both nowhere. And everywhere at the same time. Answers. Hey, Nebraska, how's it going? The unthinkable is the expected. Yo, I lost it when the I saw truth that. Is not the truth. What dimension are you even in? And like he didn't add the humor to it, which is no, why no. it made it so good. Yeah. Oh yeah, Jordan Peele, dude. That Jordan guy's got Peele, so much reach. he is, he is legit, dude. Honestly, he's so much more than Key and Peele. It's not a, not even close. Like that's such, he's he is incredibly and 
talented. He is. And, and you don't you don't think about it because you think of Key and Peel, but man, dude's like, gifted. I mean, he's got that new he's got that new movie coming out that's like a horror movie where people like kill you with scissors or something. And I saw the trailer and I like was like, this is the scariest thing. I've ever <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's yeah. sneaky Scary good with the uh... Exorcist now. Yeah, scarier than that. So scarier. He's uh-huh. definitely uh, uh, a jack of all trades. He's funny as hell. Yeah. He makes really scary movies. I'm really, really excited about this Twilight Zone iteration. So like Blake said, my dad loves this show. Blake's dad loves mm-hmm. this show. And they've yeah. kind of passed that love on to us. Uh, um, it's just it, uh, one of those things that we like to do with our dad. You know, hang out and watch Twilight Zone is something that we like to do a lot. So this right. is definitely going to be very fun to revisit this with a new new host, new yeah, generation. Especially, especially because like when we watch Twilight, like with Dad, you know, it's like right. Okay, like this like, is this is cool, like, but it's really like, it's old. Just yeah. so bad. You're yeah, you know, watch this. Is, this is like the episode of Twilight Zone when he wakes up and everybody's different. Yeah. Which episode is that? I don't know. They're all like they're that. all like that. That's mm-hmm. Exactly right. But this one is going to be like. Up. You're going to be probably scared, which is going to make me not really want to watch it, but I'm going to watch it. So yeah. <laughs> we, all know, we, we all know Chuck hates scary movies, the 31-year-old male who's scared to watch horror films. That's like, but, right. I, but I will watch. Sorry, it's all your fault, dude. dude. It's both of y'all's fault. We, we, all we traumatized, traumatized him. Me. It's fine. It's fine. I'll so, take the blame. But we're not going to talk about that. But, yeah, it's going to be legit, man. I'm super hyped about that. I think yeah. it's going to be... A smash hit for sure. So the last little piece of news before we log off here, um, something that just came across the wire yesterday, and it's something that we have to mention. Uh, our boy Definitely. Ted from Scrubs. Um, if you watch Scrubs, you know who Ted is, uh, Teddy Buckland. Um, it was announced yesterday that he has lung cancer, uh, which, you know, obviously is not good. Um, but, you know, it's sad because – not only is he a great part of that show, he's a great part of Seinfeld as well. He plays a very minor role in that, but it's hilarious. And if you've never heard him actually sing in his a cappella group that they have on the show. Uh, what is their name in real uh, life? The, uh, shoot. Kendra, yeah. I have one of his songs on my Spotify playlist, but he is legit. Like, if you've ever seen um, the end of Scrubs when he plays his guitar and sings, hey, uh, it's amazing, but just little funny little acapella stuff he does throughout the entire series is also really good too. But he's incredibly talented. He could battle through it though. I believe that. I think he's going to, come on. You're telling me you don't remember the the worthless peons. His real band name is the blinks. Blinks. (laughs) So if you, if you know any, if you're on Spotify, go check out the blinks. Uh, he's, he's very, you know, it's very good. He does a cover of, Hey, y'all like Chuck said, that's really, really good. Um, yes. But, awesome. you know, we he's only 55, so that's pretty sad. Um, and we, you know, we really hope that he's able to recover from this because he's awesome, man. You can't not yeah, love never, We can't start 2019 off like 2018 was, man. We can't be losing some of the greats out there. We got to hope and pray that he turns it around because, you know, cancer, if, if, we, if this was RTG after dark, I would drop some choice words and thoughts on cancer, but it's not that time yet. So, uh, yeah. We believe, believe in you, Teddy. We hope you're going to do well. We know you'll do well. But, you know, sorry to end the show on such a depressing note. But, you know, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what the Super Bowl was, too, man. Every time I hear, see something like uh, a good commercial, then, like, you'd be hit in the feels. You'd be like, yeah, I'm not I'm not crying. You're crying. What is this salty discharge coming out of my eyes? <laughs> what, what is, you know, when the coach is talking just to the need first to go uh, over here and uh, check something. Yeah, yeah. right. Gotta go get some <laughs> air really quick. <laughs> uh, <you> know, <clears throat> we still have we, Betty White, so it's okay. We, yeah. we do have Betty White. We still got sure. her chugging along, so thank God for but, that. But, you know, as always, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Please spread the word. Love the, you all. The Real Talk Gaming and Sports That's Podcast totally live every Thursday, seven thirty ish. Ish highly emphasized when your That's host true. has a child. But you know, just okay, please okay. be sure to check back with us on Thursdays. But definitely always come hanging out with us in the stream as always, guys. Thank all you, you so much for all the fittings and everything we, else. Yes, guys. we we appreciate y'all so much. You don't even know. Please follow us on our show's social media account. I'm trying to get the sports side up a little bit to catch up with shoot. I mean, my you know actual career backgrounds in social media. He's crushing me in the on the Twitter game. So yeah. please, please give our sports account a follow. 
it's not just sports. I throw some funny stuff in there too. I promise. I'm not going to spam you with just sports stuff. But just come true. give us a follow. Definitely check out our Instagram account. Got to give Chute a big time shout out. Ever since he got a computer, like our Insta account is popping. Like, you know, he's going to put some legit clips on there. So yeah, definitely follow us on Insta. Yeah, our Instagram, um, you know, I've been trying to, to make wakes in that in that department. I mean, social media is such a uh, hard thing to really uh, get down and understand. But we're, you know, we're trying to grind on it. And uh, I do put out content daily. I mean, I, I take clips from the stream. So if you, um, you know, are interested in any of that, be sure to uh, check us out. It's just at Real Talk Gaming as usual. We're at Real Talk Gaming everywhere else, um, except for Twitter because some chucker has at Real Talk Gaming. Uh, so we're mm-hmm. at underscore Real Talk Gaming on yes. uh, Twitter, and, and uh, we're at Re- we're at Real Talk WCC for the sports account because again, some chucker has at Real Talk Sports yeah. and every underscore every other way you can possibly write it, mm-hmm. someone's got it. So we're just going to stick with the OG Real Talk with Shoot and Shock handle. But yep. definitely give us a follow on that and swing through the chat, man. We love we, It makes gaming that much better when we have you guys to hang out with. That is for sure. That is for 